So today we're going to talk about Sheikh Jarrah and how you absolutely have no idea what you're talking about. The amount of times I have heard the term ethnic cleansing used against Israel, especially when talking about the neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan and other neighborhoods in East Jerusalem, it's like Seriously? Like, do you even know what ethnic cleansing means? Do you even know what's going on in East Jerusalem? Do you even know the law? Don't worry guys, I'm here today to tell you what really is going on in Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan and other neighborhoods in East Jerusalem and why ethnic cleansing couldn't be further from the truth. It's really just a civil real estate case. Okay, so first let's get some facts straight about what is Sheikh Jarrah. Sheikh Jarrah is a small neighborhood in East Jerusalem that is most mostly populated by Palestinians at the moment. But what you should also know is that this neighborhood does have a Jewish name, which is Nachalat Shimon, because there is historical value to the Jewish people of this neighborhood, because the tomb of Simon the Just, or Shimon Tzadik, is actually buried there and it has been a pilgrimage site for Jews for thousands of years. But what you also don't know is that for centuries, Jews and Arabs lived side by side peacefully in this neighborhood. They lived side by side in peace for centuries up until 1948 when the Jordanians actually expelled the Jews from that neighborhood. Before I get into all the nitty gritty of the dispute itself, I think what is important to recognize first and foremost, even if you don't watch this entire video, is that you should know that that this is actually a civil dispute between Jewish owners of property and Palestinian tenants who have been refusing to pay rent. And this case has actually been brought to court by the Jews in 1982. This isn't something new. And I think the absolute most important thing you take from this video is that it's a civil dispute that Hamas and other terrorist organizations that definitely don't have peace in mind have taken the civil dispute of Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan and other neighborhoods in East Jerusalem and have made it political, have made it a war between religions. It has nothing to do with it. Okay, now we can get into the nitty gritty. In order to fully understand the situation, we need to go back into history to 1876 when the Ottomans ruled what was Palestine. Keep in mind, there was never a country called Palestine. Let's just get that out of the way. So again, Jews and Arabs lived side by side peacefully and two Jewish organizations purchased land in the neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. These organizations were the Sephardic Community Council and the General Council of the Assembly of Israel. And these legal transactions were registered legally by the Ottoman government who ruled here at the time. Nobody stole any land. Land was sold, land was purchased. Somebody got money because they sold that land to somebody else. Huh? Ethnic cleansing? Mm, no, I don't think so. So the land was owned by Jews, and you guys know how history played out. 1947, UN voted in favor of a partition. Um, Jews accepted, Arabs did not. 1948, uh, David Ben-Gurion established the state, or declared the independence for the state of Israel. The Arab countries uh, surrounding attacked, and Jordan occupied the West Bank and East Jerusalem, including the neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan. But you know what the Jordanian government never did in all of its 19 years of occupying East Jerusalem? It never once transferred the land titles to Palestinians who were living in Sheikh Jarrah. Okay, let's fast forward 1967, the small state of Israel once again was attacked by its very friendly Arab neighbors. One of them was Jordan, and guess what? Israel won. So Israel actually got back East Jerusalem, including the neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah, Silwan, etc., including all of the West Bank, and once again, Jerusalem was united. By the way, that's why we celebrate Jerusalem Day. It's like when Jerusalem was unified once again after taking it back from Jordan that occupied for 19 years. Just five months after the Six Day War in 1967, the Knesset, which is the Israeli parliament, passed a law allowing people to reclaim their lands, including Palestinians, if they just had legal documentation proving they had the rights to the land. Because the Jordanian government in its 19 years of occupation never gave legal ownership to Palestinians living in Sheikh Jarrah, in 1973, the courts decided that the land was gonna go to its original owners. So if you know anything about the law, this is legally the only way somebody could claim their land is if they had registered documentation. And the only two groups who had legal registered documentation for ever purchasing that land 
were those two groups that purchased it in the 1800s. In 1982, those two groups sued the families living on those properties because they wanted to claim back their properties. So the Jews were actually the ones to bring this dispute to court in the first place. And in 1982, there was an agreement signed between the tenants and the Jewish groups that essentially the tenants recognized that the owners of the land, of the property, are the two Jewish groups, but that the tenants would be allowed to stay there as protected tenants and continue to pay rent. Some families later disputed this agreement even though they had signed it with their lawyers a few years back and refused to pay rent and started to do illegal and unapproved renovations on the land, on the property that legally they never owned. And then basically the property owners sued the tenants again and ever since then this has been in court. I think maybe one of the reasons why people are like crying out here ethnic cleansing without actually understanding the situation is because in 2003, the Sephardic Community uh, Council sold its portion of its of the property to a different organization called Nahalat Shimon Organization, which which issued plans to the city that it wants to build their 200 housing units on that land. Keep in mind, this is a very central neighborhood. And so, you know, real estate is something that everybody wants to make money off of. <laughs> the biggest problem is that extremists on both sides have used this civil dispute in order to promote its own extreme ideologies. As somebody who will always defend Israel's right to exist and will also defend Israel's right to legitimacy, I think it's important for me to say that I don't necessarily agree with how all of the events have played out over the past few weeks and months. I think we should have found a better way to handle the situation that would not let the extremists use the civil dispute dispute to promote its extreme agendas, but it doesn't mean that I don't fully understand that this is simply a civil matter. Unfortunately, eviction of Palestinian families from East Jerusalem, while Israel is under widespread coverage and unfair double standards across the world, it just provides additional ammunition, in my opinion, for extreme groups to claim ethnic cleansing, even though that couldn't be further from the truth, and to, again, provide additional ammunition to those extreme groups who try to strike at the legitimacy of the state of Israel. And that's completely, completely insane. How has a civil case given Hamas and other terrorist organizations the right to say that Israel is ethnically cleansing. Israel does not discriminate, and the claim that Israel's agenda is ethnic cleansing couldn't be further from the truth. Almost a quarter of the Israeli population is Arab, and we live here every day, side by side, in peace. I refuse to allow extreme groups to tell you in Europe and in North America and across the world that we are at war. Arabs and Jews refuse to be enemies. We are enemies only to extreme terrorist organizations that call for the destruction of the Jewish people and the Jewish homeland. Okay, before I end this video, I just wanna provide another simple analogy that might help you understand the situation a little bit better if you haven't understood it up until now. Imagine you're a white man living in Georgia who owns property, and for the past 30, 40 years, you've been renting it out to an African-American family who refuses to pay rent and who does illegal renovations on your property. If you took that family to court to demand rent or have them evicted, do you think anybody would be saying that this is racism? The fact of the matter is, in this specific civil case, we are talking about Palestinian tenants who are refusing to pay rent and Jewish owners of the property. And that's why it's been playing into the hands for people with their political and extreme ideologies. But the law is the law. And had this been Jews against Jews or Arabs against Arabs, this wouldn't even reached international media. And believe me, there are a lot of real estate disputes every day between Jews and Jews and Arabs and Arabs, and they don't make it to your local media. So for a sec, stop and ask yourself, why this specific case? Who is promoting this agenda? And why is the entire world disputing five families who are not paying rent on lands that they legally do not own. If you are someone who doesn't want to undermine the law, if you are somebody who doesn't want to undermine property rights, and if you're somebody who basically just wants to stand with what's right, you will choose to stand with Israel.